G'day guys, how are you? Andrew Cool here with another video. In today's video I'm going to talk about the TSA. Um, they've paid IBM $47,000 for an app that only pointed right or left. Um, basically what's happening is at the airport when you get a security check, um, rather than have the person sort of, you know, say the whole you've been selected for a random, you know, pat down or whatever it may be, they've got an application which indicates what's lane to go into. So if you look here at this woman, she's tapping on an iPad or some tablet of what sort, and it's indicating whether to go left or right. So look at that, she's tapping, and she's even wearing gloves because you can never be too careful. And um, yeah, she's pointing on which line to go to for the security pass. So there you have it. Um, this goes for a whole, you know, another two minutes really so I don't really want to watch the whole thing but you get what I mean so I'm going to show you today how you can do that using using uh, vb.net so let's get to it so let's get a new project now I'm just going to use a universal app I'm just going to call it TSA airport and uh, yeah let's get into it so if the TSA is watching uh, I reckon I could probably do this with under 30 lines of code so if the TSA is watching and you do want to purchase my app, you are more than welcome to. And a matter of fact, if you like, I'll just give it to you, you know, as long as I don't have my name on it. <laughs> anyway, so let's get to it. So let's go to Solution Explorer. Now the very first thing that I'll do, I believe, is I want to add a folder and I want to put images in that folder. So rather than have my images laying there and looking untidy, I'm just going to have images. Now what I did prior to this video is I went to old mate Google and I downloaded some left and right images for our application. Okay, just like that. So there they are, they're now in there. See, so left, right. Cool, so now I want to double click on main page and uh, it's going to yeah, load up like this. Now, from looking at the woman's video, she's using a tablet, so I'm going to go ahead with the 12 inch tablet. And each time she clicks on it, it or before she clicks on it, there's a bit of text there. I, I presume it's something like tap here or click here or something like that. So, number one, we need an image box. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that there like that. And uh, yeah, the arrow doesn't have to be too big, I suppose. Although, I do want it to fill it in. So, just go fill. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get a text block, not a label, but a text block. Let's just call it a text block and confuse everybody. Yeah. And uh, the text can remain black, I suppose. Uh, sorry, the, f the font color, the text color. I suppose I'll just write tap here. I mean, I don't know what else to do to write. Tap here, I suppose. And it's probably easy to go to properties, to be honest. I'm going to make it con consolas and we'll just make it 100. Yeah, tap here. 100 is probably too big, but for those of you that are playing at home, just so you can see, now this app, I mean, it's not going to be the prettiest. It's just going to show you guys that this can be done. It's really, really easy and, uh, and so forth. So what I want to do is I just want to make sure that these, both the image and the text block they're always at the front so I'm gonna um, bring them to the front and the next thing I'm gonna do because I'm using Windows Universal app in case the TSA decide that they wanna run my app from an Xbox or whatnot um, I'm gonna grip this into a view box just like that oops make it full screen okay so I'm not going to make it so they tap the actual label itself because that's kind of annoying when you see the lady, she's just kind of tapping the screen and she seems to always keep focus on like in her peripherals the customers I suppose you would call it and that so we'll make it so if she just taps the screen so grid oops grid one just call it all it's actually a view box but whatever and uh, I'll make this white like that cool all right so now let's go to the I'll click there I'll go to properties and why is it all grid for? Oh my god just go to grid two then I must have made a mistake ah oh, I named the view box by accident not to worry 
So if they tap on the grid, double tap. Um, I'm also going to do the load event. And like I said before I made this video, I didn't even really plan on how I was going to do this, but I knew I could do it under 50 line of code, 30 lines. So, yep. So what I'll do is image dot because I want this to disappear. I'm going to do it basically like a a kind of loop. Um, collapsed and uh, text block the visibility equals visible. Okay, that's all right. So when they tap on the grid, uh, this will become visible, and the other one will become collapsed, just like that. Now I'm going to declare a few variables. So um, let's get to it. Uh, dim random as new random and dim random number as integer and now random number equals random dot next and I'll just go 1 out of 10 I suppose and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to say if random number is lower or equals to 5 then um, uh, I need to make the image source to one of those pictures so image dot source equals new um, bitmap image and I need to select the location of it and for some really Okay, reason you have to put in ms.prox. I don't know why, but before you select your image, you need to do this. Um, what was it? Images. Uh, say right arrow. PNG. And now we can select URI clients. Has to be absolute. Okay, cool. And then we can do the else statements. This is kind of using the if statement. If you've been watching my new series, you'll be able to see that. Else if random number is higher than five, then I can't make it equals to five because the problem will crash. And do that. And the only thing different between the images that I've got is one's called left and one's called right, They're both in the same folder. And then, um, this will need to be a sync, and I need to delete this so I can go back to it. And then I'll wait, because she, um, the lady in the video, she, she presses it and then it disappears after like a, a second or something. I'll wait task.delay, like that, and then once that's done, we'll go back to the main page, loaded. So let's see how lines of code we've got there. Yeah. Even with spaces there to make it look a bit neater, we are still under 30 lines of code. Now let's uh, let's start application and see if it works. All right, so TSA Airport, and there we have it. Tap here and left. Tap here and right, tap here and right, tap here and right, tap here and right, tap here and left and right and left and right and left and so on and so on and so on. So there you have it. If you did want to do the whole tap here, you could definitely just use a timer and it does it for you. Although if there was a busy peak, it would maybe you could create a little button there that says timer and you could press it and it goes left, right, left, right. So you don't have to press it each time. And then, sort of on, you know, slower peaks, you could just do the whole tap here. So you could you create a radio button. Is one radio button is what I'm trying to say. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, this is just a yeah, like I said, a quick video to show you that, you know, forty-seven thousand dollar application can be created under thirty lines of code using VB.net. So, thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.